Hey everybody. Today I'm writing an R function that's going to give me help on any stats topic that I might be interested in directly from within R Studio. I'm going to be doing this by writing a function that's going to make a call to chat GPT. And uh, as I go through and create this function, it's going to give me the opportunity to explore the interpolate function from the Elmer package that I think is a really nice helper function for when you're writing functions. So before I actually write that function, I want to work through a simple example where I do this without writing a function. And I think this is good practice before you start generalizing um, and making something that's iterable in the form of a function, you want to make sure that you can actually accomplish the thing on a specific example. So the specific example I'm going to use is the central limit theorem. And I'm going to write this prompt that I have on line 11 here, briefly explain the central limit theorem. So that right now is just a character vector that I'm going to pass along as a prompt to ChatGPT. Okay, now I have already loaded up the Elmer package, so I am now going to create the chat with chat underscore open AI. This requires that I be set up with an API key and that be saved as, um, as an environmental variable within our studio. I have a whole video where I do that with, um, with Anthropics Claude. I'll throw a link to that up top. The process is exactly the same for ChatGPT, just basically with a different website. So, you know, if you're getting an error here in this video when I start doing the chats, that's going to be the reason probably. All right, I'm using a system prompt. You're a friendly but terse statistics mentor. Give answers at the advanced undergraduate level. Obviously, you can request answers at a more advanced or a simpler level uh, with more or less verbosity if you so desire. Okay, so let's actually use this prompt in that chat and see what we get back. There'll be a little bit of a pause as this text is sent over to ChatGPT as it's processed and then sent back. So what I'd really like to do is uh, write a function that just lets me specify a different string than, you know, the central limit theorem. I'd rather be, I'd like to be able to say central limit theorem or maximum likelihood estimation or whatever. And this is where the interpolate function from inside the Elmer package is really going to come in handy. So the way I'm going to do this is by writing a new string called prompt open. And it's going to be exactly the same, except instead of the central limit theorem, I'm going to put a placeholder. Um, and I am going to want to specify this placeholder just as a variable that I'll call topic, and I'll specify that variable later. Now, here on line 17, you can see that I have enclosed that thing that's supposed to be a variable in double braces. And this is just communicating to R that the thing inside, topic, is a variable name, not a literal string. And so once I do that, I can then use the interpolate function to sort of fill in the gaps. So the next line here, interpolate prompt open comma topic equals the central limit theorem, is just going to replace the double braces topic with the thing in quotes, the central limit theorem. And I'll just illustrate that. Briefly explain the central limit theorem, just like we'd hope. Now, you might notice you have this extra sort of vertical bar here. That's a bit of a curiosity. And I think when you look at the help file for the interpolate function, it gets a little bit more clear. Interpolate as well as interpolate file and interpolate package, and you can guess what those mean, is um, these are all just lightweight wrappers around the glue function from the glue package, which does essentially this same thing, just handing back a string instead of an Elmer prompt object. But fundamentally, the two are more or less identical. If we use the actual glue function, the syntax is very slightly different. You can see we just need a single brace instead of a double brace. But then once we do that, we get exactly the same output just now as a string instead of as an Elmer object. Not a huge difference, but I wanted to point that out. Now, one thing that I like here is that we can vector, that the, all this is vectorized. So I'm going to stick with interpolate just because I think it's uh, coming from the Elmer package. It plays a little bit nicer with the prompts that we're doing when you get it to um, slightly more specific tasks than what we're doing in this vid. So suppose I'm interested not just in the central limit theorem, but also maximum likelihood estimation. Really good thing to talk about at that sort of advanced undergraduate level. So I'm going to make a length 2 vector called uh, my topics. And then I'll interpolate that same open prompt that I had before, briefly explain, with both of these two. And you'll see now I get a vector back of length 2. 
briefly explain the central limit theorem and briefly explain maximum likelihood estimation. I think I'm going to put the word the into my into my topics just so that things are a little bit more human readable, a little, a little bit more polite. Okay, now I think I'm ready to write that function where I'm going to specify the topic of interest and uh, have R then pass it to ChatGPT and then pass back that response. So the code here is in the next section. I'm writing a function, so we write uh, the name of the function that we want, stats help, specify that we're writing a function, and then inside there say what the arguments are going to be. So in this case, I'm just going to have one argument. I'm going to later tell R the topic of interest. And uh, what I'm going to do inside of that function is I'm going to initialize the chat object. I'm doing that exactly as I did a minute ago. I'm doing this from within the function here so that uh, it's not going to have memory. I would rather if it started from a clean slate whenever we call this function. Um, after that, you can see I have basically the same prompt as before. It's all just wrapped from within a function. And Let's try this out. Let's get some stats help on the central limit theorem. My hope is that this is going to do exactly what we saw just a minute ago. There'll be a momentary delay, and then hopefully we get a pretty decent response back from ChatGPT and from this function explaining the central limit theorem. And there you can see it's doing exactly that. By the way, I'm not doing any proofreading here on the output of ChatGPT, so I'm not swearing by the, uh, the actual output here. But every time I've done this in practice, the response has been pretty accurate. Now, I would like to uh, uh, take both of these prompts that I have here in my topics, or both of these topics, and get responses to those at once. Obviously, there's a lot of different ways you can uh, iterate in R. The most basic way in base R is L apply. So let's use this. And so L apply is going to apply the stats help function to every element in the my topics vector. So what this should be doing is taking the central limit theorem, passing it to stats help, then going back, doing the same thing with maximum likelihood estimation. Now this will take a second and uh, it, it's not going to come out exactly like how we might want it just yet. I'm going to go back and fix that now. So what you can see is that the output is streaming. Let me zoom back up here so that you can see. We're getting the output sort of in real time as ChatGPT gives us the responses back. So the central limit theorem, blah, 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 blah. And then we'll get maximum likelihood here, blah, 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 blah. But then at the very end, it's going to actually end up repeating all of that. You can see we're now getting back a list of length two where those two responses are contained or very similar responses are contained. And that's not actually what we want here. I would like to just have, you know, one or the other. And again, the help file provides a little bit of insight into that. The, um, the key argument here is echo. It's down here somewhere. Oh, I need this in, uh, in the help file for chat OpenAI. It's a different help file entirely. And you know you can look at any of these, uh, these chat commands and it'll give you the same information fundamentally. All right, so there we go, it's echo. And you can see our choices are none, output, and all. And if I go down here a little bit, you can see what those options are. So none, don't emit any output, default when running a function, and echo, echo text and tool calling output as it streams in, default when running at the console. Now we are in a function here, so I was expecting there to be no output. However, we did get streaming output as well. And um, so if you actually read a little bit more deeply into the documentation in the Elmer package, they recommend that even though this is the default, that you specify echo equals none yourself anyway. So I'm going to do that, and I think that should fix the problem. Oop, that shouldn't be within interpolate, though. That should be within just the chat. So let's do echo equals quote none. Resave that function, and then uh, make sure all this works with the L apply in place. Give that just one second as the output is uh, is streamed over from chat and uh, and given to us in our console. We're seeing there's a bit of a delay here. There's uh, nothing too surprising about that, although this is a tiny bit longer than I'm expecting. All right, so this time we just got that list back, which is, uh, I think, good news. So we've accomplished the thing we wanted to accomplish. Obviously, we could use a, a, a longer vector of prompts if we wanted here. Now, this leads in very directly to the next topic that I'm going to cover here on equitable equations, which is just that the format of this output 
maybe isn't ideal. We just have two long character vectors contained in a list, and obviously there's a lot we can do with that. However, it's uh, often desirable to have a bit more of a structured output here. For instance, you can see that, uh, that the stats help for the central limit theorem has some different paragraphs in it, like setup, examples, things like that. It might be nice to get a data frame out where we actually get all of that information sort of in separate columns. So that'll be my next to do. Once that next video is recorded, I'll make sure to have a link up top for you there.